You're watching Kai City RC. My name is David. Let's talk Kyosho Four Wheel Drive Legends. Hey there, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I'd like to start by saying a big thank you to everybody that commented and gave me some feedback on my last video. Your support is very much appreciated. Um, to that end, I figured this this time we do a look, well, we take a look at the four wheel drive boogies from Kyosho. So if you haven't seen my two wheel drive video in which I kind of compare some of the differences between the, the two wheel drive boogies, the link is, I think, that way. So what you're looking at here are three of the four four-wheel drive Kyosho boogies from Kyosho's legendary series of re-releases. There is a fourth, the Turbo Optima, which I do have, but it's in a box and waiting to be built. So from left to right, we have the Optima, which was released in 1985, the Javelin, which was released in 1986, and the Optima Mid, which was originally released in 1987. The Optima and the Javelin are be released I think 2015, 16, 17, something like that. The Optima made just this year. In fact, it's just reaching people outside of Japan right now as this video will probably be published. We'll start with the similarities first. They're all four wheel drive belt driven buggies. Aside from that, there are some big differences between the Optima Javelin and the Optima Mid. So what I'll do is I'll talk about the Optima and the Javelin first, because these two are the slightly older re-releases and they're also much more similar in terms of design. So let's concentrate on these two first. The Optima and the Javelin are essentially exactly the same car. There's no mechanical differences between them. The only difference is the wheel color and the body. That's it. One of the things I do really like about Kyosho is the fact that whether it's intentional or they didn't have a choice, they went through and they updated a lot of the things on the buggies um, just to make them more suitable for modern electronics, which I do like about that. Um, I mean, there's an argument, you know, you could go either way. I mean, Tamiya with their re-releases, they keep exactly as it was back in the day with the exception of some, you know, logos, logos for the stickers, um, decals. Whereas Kyosho go the other way and they kind of do, you know, update, I guess, their re-releases. Um, I kind of like both. Sometimes it's nice to build a buggy knowing this is exactly how it was back in the day. But then other times, especially if you want to race it or, or use it, it's nice to have a buggy that's kind of designed for modern electronics. So anyway, the Optima and the Javelin underneath are identical, mechanically identical. The only difference is the body and the cage and that's it. They are both four wheel drive. These two are belt driven. Um, when you buy the kit, Kyosho gives you the option. They include it in the box, the sprockets and chain, if you want to go with the original sprocket and chain design, or they give you pulleys and belts. Um, I fitted the belt simply because I knew I was going to run these and I didn't while the chain would have been nice, I, I didn't want the hassle of having to adjust chain tension and that kind of stuff. So I went with um, the belts and the pulleys. Um, you do get in the box the sprockets and chains. Although, if I remember right, the Turbo Optima doesn't come with a chain. You get the sprockets, but you, not the chain. I'll have to check on that. But anyway, yeah, these two buggies are identical. Um, so a decision of which one should you buy, it's purely aesthetics, which one you like the look of. Though I will say, if you are planning to buy one and then try and switch bodies between, between them, you're probably better off getting yourself a Javelin. And the reason I say that is because the Javelin has a rear wing on a separate part tree so the rear wing stays and the rear wing mount on a separate part tree which you get in the javelin kit but you don't get that in the optima kit so if you wanted to go from a javelin to an optima then you've got to remove the rear wing stays which are kind of sandwiched between some plates and the gearbox so it's not a straight it's not complicated but it's not as straightforward as just swapping bodies over um but yeah if you get the javelin then you'll get the wing stays but you'll also get the spaces that the optima has in place of wing stays and so if you were to buy if you were to buy a javelin then in order to convert to an optima literally all you need to do is buy the optima body um in the, going in the opposite direction if you have an optima and you want to make it a javelin then you need to buy the, the cage which is one part the i think it's ot250 something um part tree which includes the rear wing stays and then also the rear wing is separate as well so it's more expensive to go from an optima to a javelin than it is from a javelin to an optima so just bear that in mind but other than that they're identical 
as you probably noticed I'm not one for not one for box art so none of mine look anything like the box art equivalent um, I would say for the javelin um, I'm not a fan of the orange cage um, but fortunately Kyosho offer like several different colors as options I chose white which when I bought it I had no trouble buying it but since well, over a year ago but since then it's it's become really rare and it's really difficult to get hold of so if you're lucky enough to get a white cage well done the other colors are the green the black uh, I think there's a red as well they're a lot easier to come by but I think the white cage really does transform the look of the car uh, Kyosho also do multiple different color sets of wheels uh, I just love the way these things look the small wheel size just the, the, the way the chassis is designed so the chassis is um, chassis rails but they're much closer together and so when the kids build it's got this very it's got this sense of feeling of um, solidness um, heft um, there's no flex anywhere um, I've just come from a couple of SRB chassis builds and those those cars that almost all metal and the quality is really good but when you finish putting it together there's so much flex in the chassis I, I mean you know I'm not knocking Tamiya I'm a huge Tamiya fan but Kyosho's are very different so if you kind of like if you've built an SRB or something you know an older buggy from Tamiya and you're thinking that the Kyosho buggies are going to be somewhat similar they're not I mean they're all metal well predominantly metal but they're just really well engineered uh, they're, they're built tough to say but you've got two chassis rails and then you've got a series of uh, plates vertical plates um, kind of holding it all together um, the, on the javelin and the optima the motors are rear mounted uh, I actually prefer this um, I know everybody's kind of been waiting for the Optima mid and you know it's complete track wet and I, I get that but I prefer the handling um, especially when it comes to jumping of these rear motor mounted buggies um, it's just a personal preference I mean I know in the right hands the Optima mid will just run rings around these but I just prefer the the rear motor layout and there are some advantages as well when I talk about the Optima mid later I'll mention that but basically with the Optima, the Javelin and the Turbo Optima because the motors and the gearboxes at the rear, you know, behind the rear axle you've got a lot much more space for electronics and batteries whereas with the Optima Mid everything's been brought forward you know, in front of the rear axle and so space for electronics can be a little on the tight side uh, One thing I would mention if you are going to get an Optima or Javelin or the Turbo Optima and you should definitely invest in universal swing shafts um, CVs for the, at least at the very least for the front axle and the reason I say that is because with my javelin build I had a problem where I'll have to show you on the optimum because this has still got swing shafts um, when the steering was at full lock when the steering is at full lock I don't know if you can see this on the camera but the, the, the dog bones are almost coming out of the drive cups um, the wheel hubs um, now on the Optima I was able to kind of dial back the end point and still have pretty good steering and it, it's not really much of an issue but despite the fact that these both are identical uh, the javelin was a different matter I had to really limit the servo travel in order to stop the um, it wasn't coming out completely but it was catching and it was it was noisy at full lock and it wasn't smooth at all so I ended up buying the universals and replacing them and one thing I did notice after doing that is the transmission is so much more smoother and free 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 moving with the universals in uh, you can tell the difference I can immediately I could tell the difference between the Optima that's got the, the dog bones in and the Javelin that's got the universals so it's highly recommended at some point I've actually got a spare set and at some point I will um, put them into the Optima but at the moment it's it's been fine but I don't know if the camera's picking this up now I did try and solve the problem on the Javelin by putting some O-rings on the diff side uh, similar to what Tamiya does but the problem with that 
was the o-ring wouldn't sit properly in the recess on the drive cup and so a normal suspension height it was fine but when the suspension compressed and it tried to force the the dog bone kind of inboard towards the diff the o-ring was adding some resistance and kind of affecting the suspension travel so i hunted around for some little pieces of foam because tamiya do a similar thing sometimes they put like little foam plugs but i couldn't find any so in the end i just i, I just bit the bullet and got the universals they're a little expensive but um the the dif difference they make to the drivetrain efficiency is is really good so that is the optima and the javelin so there's talk now about the optima mid which at the moment is just been re-released and it's finally made its way into the hands of everybody outside of japan i actually got mine at the end of march non-box art as you can tell this is the re-release from Kyosho that everybody's been waiting for the Optima Mid and this is the one that I know the best back in the day I, I didn't really race against these two but I did race a lot against the Optima Mid and lost the time I was racing the Terra Scorcher just like the other two it's it's really well built the parts quality is exceptional it's a fantastic build um, to run personally I prefer the Optima and the Javelin uh, personally. I can tell the Optima Mid is the faster car. It turns better, it handles better, but when it comes to jumping, I find it's a lot easier for my, for someone with my skills to jump these two than it is to jump the Optima Mid. So the Optima Mid, as the name suggests, the motor and gearbox are mid-mounted and brought forward at the rear axle. Uh, it has benefits for weight balance. Um, the big downside, however, is the space you've got for electronics there's not a lot when it comes to fitting uh esc you need to be very careful with which one you choose because there is just absolutely no space i fitted the kyosho demands um, brushless esc and brushless motor um, and the only reason i chose to do that was simply because this the kyosho one has got screw mounts and it's designed to actually screw to the underside of the upper deck and it just barely fits in the space um, you could get a hobby wing 1060 in there or something similar and uh, no problem but if you've got a large speed controller you should you're definitely going to want to check before you try and you try and fit it into your optimum mid because I, I don't think a lot of them are going to fit it's the downside basically of having such a you know small chassis space available um, the electronics are really crammed in there and I'm using the Kyosho Limans motor to 15.5 turn and I've got to say when I first ran this I was very underwhelmed with the performance both of my other four-wheel drive Kyoshos um, they run G15 motor it's a 15 turn single and these are plenty quick I run nickel metal hydride on all my buggies including the Optima mid well anyway when I installed this and um, over here at least, I'm pretty sure everywhere else as well, over here the brushless Limans ESC and the brushless 15.5 turn motor are expensive. Oh, I mean the, this brush single in here is extremely cheap and then Hobby Ring 1060 or the, the Kyosho branded equivalent also very cheap. So I kind of splashed out on the brushless setup for this and I, I was very underwhelmed with the speed. I mean, partly it's due, I think, to the fact that I'm using nickel metal hydride batteries. I don't have the punch of the light bulb, but it w it's just, it's not fast at all. The biggest uh, change came when I changed out the kit pinion. Um, you definitely need to replace the pinion and a spur as well, ideally, but uh, you definitely need to go up a few tooth on the pinion because um, with a 15 turn brushless motor on nickel metal eye drive this was slow and when i say slow i'm talking not much faster than a 540 silver can um that's that that's the kind of speed i was getting so i was kind of a bit surprised by that but now i've changed uh, opinion uh, it's made a big difference in actual fact it's um the esc is running cooler now as well so it's kind of been a big benefit all around one thing i will mention when you're building the optimum mid um, the instructions, Kyosho's instructions are nowhere near as good, I feel personally, uh, nowhere near as good as Tamiya's. Um, that's one, one area where Tamiya is far superior um, instruction manuals and also box art. But yeah, the Kyosho manuals can be a bit cryptic at times and if you've just got yourself an Optima Mid, I'm sure you're going to have the same 
not issue but the same confusion I have when it comes to setting the the cam belt tensioner in the rear gearbox you have to go right to the as I remember it's it doesn't say if you set it up how the diagram shows you you end up with a belt that's way too loose right at the back of the manual or on a separate piece possibly there is actually something telling you what the correct setting for the belt tensioner is I, I believe it's setting number eight from memory but yeah <laughs> that was one one part in the build where i was a bit confused and the other kind of not downside i think for the optima mid but i'm a huge fan of having driver figures in cars i think it adds a level of realism and you know a element of customization to buggies but unfortunately due to the design of the optima mid there is just no space in in there for any kind of driver figure which i feel it kind of detracts from the looks you know as i as i stand here stand here looking in i can see driver figure driver figure driver figure and then all i can see is a receiver and a, a belt cover um, which is a shame but still nevertheless it's still a fantastic buggy um as to which one i recommend which one should you buy well mm, tough choice there very tough choice mm, i'd have to say the javelin mostly just because of the way it looks I mean, it's not unique. There are plenty of the, particularly older kill shows that have like a cage design, but the overall aesthetics, uh, drivability, it's just everything is ideal for me. And yeah, the Javelin is probably me, one, of, one of, if not the, my most favorite RC car, although I do have lots of favorites. If you want all out performance, the Optima Mid is the one to go for. But yeah, I would choose the Javelin simply because if you buy a Javelin and, and you want to put an optimum body on it, it's very straightforward. Uh, the other buggy that's not featured here, the Turbo Optima, is basically a, a, an Optima with loads of bling on it. I mean, it, it's got a few small upgrades, but it, it's all mostly, mostly looks. Well, I'm going to wrap this one up here. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful and informative. My name is David. I'm going to do some RC driving on this wonderful Sunday morning here in Japan. Um, beautiful weather and the park is not so busy. So I'll catch you in the next one. This is Dave signing out.